Yeah, um, obviously very memorable night. Um, for me personally, it's uh, to have so many people come out. Um, I know it was for these kids. I also know a bit of it was for me. And that really, really means a lot to me. 12 years I've been here. And I miss my California family, but Hawaii fills the hole pretty good. Um, to have this many people here tonight, I promise you my mom was in tears on the couch um, watching this and just the tribute to this team, to the program, and to the hard work. Um, so I just cannot, ha I don't have enough of the right words. I probably need Kanoa for this uh, to just thank people. Uh, and my appreciation just runs incredibly deep. Uh, as far as the game goes, we gave up 36 points from three. That's not something we do. We're much better from behind the arc. We need to figure some things out defensively. We've kind of stalled. Uh, we need to get back to much more aggressive defense, much better team defense. Uh, offensively, I thought Deja Phillips had an amazing first half. She carried us, uh, got 1,000 points, which is pretty spectacular to do that in one of the biggest attended games ever. And then Lily turned it on in the second half. So the one-two punch showed up, and it was really fun to see. Uh, I hope fans come back. I hope they see, you know, what we're trying to build here, and the excitement that was in this place. It was electric, and they definitely carried us to the swing tonight. Uh, so work to do, but uh, absolutely, just uh, just thrilled for this week and tonight and everything that it meant. Obviously, a, a, a super special night. I'm just curious if there was a moment, if you had that moment where it really kind of hit you, um, how how special it was. You know, coaches have a tendency to be able to compartmentalize and sometimes to an unhealthy level. And I, um, I tried not to think about tonight all week. I tried not to think about it, you know, when I walked out and saw the kids in the tunnel. And when I, actually, when I walked out from my office, there was a line. And I actually stood on the balcony and thanked people. And I thought, this is, this is very surreal. Um, coming out from the locker room, you know, the kids were out there in the tunnel and then walking out and, and hearing the ovation that the players got and, and the staff got. Um, I think at that moment, I was like, Oh, this, this might be for real. There's a lot of people here tonight. Um, and I think the absolute moment where I, I let it hit me was after the victory and just seeing the crowd. And, and that was just really special. This will definitely go down in my memory as a really cool night uh, in my career here in Hawaii. Early on in the game, uh, Santa Barbara got off to like 8-2 to two start. Um, the magnitude of the crowd and the, like the moment did it yeah. for the players, was it a little jarring or nerve-wracking, do you think? You know, I think that if the sh we played really good basketball those first four or five minutes, our ball movement was really good. We were getting paint touches. We were we were moving the way we asked the girls to do it, and the shots weren't going in. And that's when I was like, uh oh, we're tight. I think if those shots go in, I don't know if, if Santa Barbara ever comes back from that. We got down eight to two, and I think a little bit of a flashback of uh oh, here it goes again. This is what happened in Santa Barbara. Shots weren't falling, and then they stopped kind of buying into the game plan and tried to go back to a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, pounding the air out of the ball. Um, and we just had to go in at halftime and say, hey, look, you know, you can't have the paralysis by analysis. You know, you, you can't let this crowd affect you in a negative way. You've got to get back to doing what is working. And, and that's moving the ball, sharing the ball. And I thought that in the second half, we did that much better. But pros and cons of that crowd, right? We're not used to playing in front of this. Um, those shots go in. Maybe a little bit different story. They, maybe they stay with the game plan a little longer, but it took us a while to get back to it. What is it about Deja? We've seen her in, in the biggest moments. Uh, it seems that she just takes her game up to uh, another level. You mentioned it tonight, you know, scoring her thousandth point in front of that crowd. What is it about her that makes her so special in those biggest moments? To quote Deja, I'm a winner. That's Deja. Deja's a winner. Um, she doesn't mean that cocky. She means it with great humility. She puts the work in. In her high school career, she's won, what, four state championships, and we've won with her here. She doesn't think about the moment. She is just in the moment. And when you can play in the moment, you do extraordinary things. And Deja has a tendency to just be in the moment and do extraordinary things. Um, you know, when she hit her thousands, I said, hey, you hit your thousands. She goes, did I? And I'm like, yeah. I was like, feel free to hit a thousand more in tonight's game. I'm cool with that. And she was like, oh, okay, let's go. And move on and that's just the way that kid has been and um, I, I couldn't in my entire career she's up in the top of kids I'm proud of for their growth and for just how she loves her teammates and how she loves her staff and how she loves herself and that's that's huge and kind of a similar vein when we're talking about special guards Lily a phenomenal second half especially uh, to kind of similar to Deja's first half buoy you guys uh, what can you say about 
her tonight and uh, especially in front of that crowd uh you know she's back home here yeah. in front of uh 4, plus i think the crowd got her a little bit in the first half um i also think that she saw runway in the first half and then wasn't recognizing how quick the collapse was coming and was struggling getting off the ball and the second half because of some of the things we did offensively and the way they rotated defensively they didn't have that same ability to collapse and when they can't collapse she can get to the basket so for whatever reason, uh, the lights weren't as bright for her in the second half, and she was able to get to the basket, you know, uh, hit a big three, free throws until the very end. Um, but yeah, I think that winning in, in, in an environment like this for her uh, was, and the way she played was very special. It's a little bit of a broader question, but um, the state of the game of women's basketball, college basketball, I mean, Kayla Clark just doing yeah. what she's done and UNESCO's you know going ahead there with Steph Curry today in the shootout at All-Star Weekend. Um, you guys have this you know great event going on so I don't know if, if this helps like kind of crystallize it all like you know just what your thoughts on the state of the game of women's hoops are right now. You know I think one of the first times people asked me you know why would people want to come and watch basketball and I said sometimes it's tough it's like watching water run uphill. We're not we're running downhill now. I think women's basketball is absolutely running downhill. We, we play really good basketball, we're skilled, we shoot the ball very well. The only thing we don't do is play above the rim and there are women that are doing that now. Um, I also think that there's a little bit of difference at times and, and not, I don't want this taken out of context and, and across the board, I don't think the women ever forget why they play. You know, we're not gonna go sign a $60 million con contract in, a, in the NBA. We're playing because of the little girls and the little boys that are in that tunnel, we're playing because of our community. Um, even in the WNBA, you know, I was there for a year. You play for your, your community, you play for your crowd. Those women stay after games for hours and sign autographs. And it's, it's never the, hey, I'm too cool for school. Um, and I know that's not across the board in the men's game, but the women's game, it's, it's, it's really evolving. Um, and I think it's fun to watch. Um, and I think it also means something for women to see very strong women on the court being successful. And I, I hope advertisers get behind the women's basketball because that's really the difference where the money isn't. Um, and I just hope that we can continue to play good ball in the state of Hawaii so people want to come and support this amazing group of young women because they're good good kids. They're really good kids. I was ask you about the, um, you went kind of small, that one uh, lineup in the second half, just kind of what the thinking was because Whitfield was still out there and was just kind of, you know, where, where uh, you were sort of seeing that. Yeah, Whitfield was a little bit of a hard matchup for Jackie, and we knew we were going to have to give Amani a breather. So they also have to guard us. And, you know, Whitfield had to guard Deja at times. And so we were kind of looking at, can we go small, spread out the court, get a little bit of transition, get more driving kick, you know, make them have to play us a little bit more one-on-one. -on -one. And we have all the confidence in the world that either Melani or Deja can guard Whitfield. I know you don't like to look really, really far down the line, but it, it's hard not to think back to last year. You guys going to face a LSU at their place and mm -hmm. uh, that environment. How much can a night like tonight help prepare you guys later on in the postseason when those crowds do continue to get bigger and bigger and louder and louder? You know, it's funny because that was pregame. You know, pregame was you have a community that loves you and believes in you so much that they're going to give you their time tonight to not only support you tonight, to not only help you stay in first place, but they don't know how much they're preparing you for the NC2A. And that was exactly the conversation, that take every moment that is in front of you and make it an opportunity. And you're gonna have a crowd. It's gonna be nerve wracking, it's gonna be exciting, it's gonna be electrifying. Take this crowd and, and take the time they're giving you and embrace that. Um, I think the girls did. And I know they're gonna look back on this night and just go like, wow, this is, this is really cool. Talk about the 12 years going by so fast, Coach. Mm -hmm. uh, what have you done to instill community service and aloha to your girls, the women, and what you're doing for the community behind the scenes? Days are long and the years are fast. Um, I think that these kids over 12 years and this community has instilled as much aloha in me as I could ever reciprocate to the community. Um, you know, it took me a while. I remember in my first interview, I said, please don't ask me to pronounce the state fish because I won't be able to do it, and I still can't do it. Um, and as I just went to speaking engagements and watched the local kids and watched how the kids in the locker room were and the expectations, it was never about taking. It was always about being a part of something. And it was always about being a part of something so much bigger than Laura Beeman and what we do in that locker room. 
And so those conversations of trying to define aloha, you can't. You, you live aloha, you feel aloha, yeah, I don't think you can define it. Um, but it's being a part of something bigger than you. And if you truly embrace that, then you know what aloha is. And that's what we try to instill in the locker room, is little kid wants your autograph, you stop and give him an autograph, and you take a picture, and you're in the ball. People are watching you, do it the right way. You know, you, if you're asked to go read to some kids, let's go read to some kids, and you know, if you're asked to go volunteer someplace, let's do it, let's do it the right way. Um, and just represent the way that you know we expect you to represent. Uh, and I think that over the years, for the most part, this team has done that. You know, I, I want us to be on the front page, but for things like this, not other things. And I think they've done a fantastic job. But I think that I've learned as much about what that is and what that means as I've been able to teach, that's for sure. Last for me, just uh, you were not probably the most comfortable with this whole like Beeman's big bash, and you sort of allowed yourself to take on some of that responsibility for the sake of the program and exposure and the kids. Um, how much pressure did you feel with the crowd coming out the way it did to win tonight under these circumstances? A lot. You know, and that's where the compartmentalizing comes in, where it's like, don't think about it, don't think about it. And I, I will tell you, there was a point in the fourth quarter where I said to myself, <laughs> would you rather win tonight in front of this crowd or win when it counts in Henderson? And I had to stop. And I said, I want to win in Henderson. And there's like, you know, don't hate me. <laughs> uh, and this is the conversation that's going on. You know, I'm not thinking X's and O's all the time. I'm thinking, you know, angel devil. And I, I thought, what would the fans rather have? You know, of course we want them to come back. And of course we want to win in front of tonight. But I was like, if I have to pick a choice, he was talking to God is what I was doing. God, if I have to make a choice, <laughs> if I have to make a choice, I want Henderson. And so we can go to the NC2A because I know how much that means to this place. Mm. That that means something when we can go on and represent on a national stage. Thank you for not making that, we make that choice or anybody else. But um, yeah, I, I think tonight I'll probably go home and I will probably have a pretty emotional moment of what this means to have people come out and want to support these kids, but also want to support Laura Beeman. And that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's good. And you all gave us your time tonight and helped us get a victory. Mahalo.